Well, good morning, explorers. I hope you're having a great day today. Uh, I do hope you're enjoying your Easter break um, and you're uh, outside enjoying the sunshine and the great weather um, and having a good time. Now, today's story, we're looking at um, some good news. It may not look like it to begin with, but at the end, we'll see that it is good news and it's the type of news that you'll want to share. And that's the bit we want to really think about, the good news and sharing it with other people. Now, to start with, we're back again with Elisha. Can anyone remember who Elisha was? He was a prophet, if you said that, well done. Do you know what a prophet is? Can you remember what a prophet is? It's a man of God, someone who God talks to, it's a messenger, someone who God talks to, to tell the people, the Israelites, what God wants them to do. Right, so we're back with Elisha and looking at one of the stories about him in the Bible. Now, in the beginning of this story, we're back uh, with the Israelites, all right? And they're in their town of Samaria, all right? And they're all having a good time. But something, can you remember uh, a while ago, they were attacked, weren't they? They were attacked by the king of Aram, uh, the Syrian army. They were attacked by them. And God rescued them and he saved them by making the army go blind. But then he gave, he was forgiving and he looked after them and he healed them and he sent them home. And you would have thought everyone would have remembered how great God was. But the problem with sin is we forget. And the Israelites forgot how God looked after them. And they didn't want to have anything to do with God. Uh, and they, wanted to, they went their own way. They forgot all about God and what he was doing. So God was angry. And so God let the Syrian army, who previously he'd stopped from attacking Israel, he allowed them to once again attack the people of Israelites. So the Syrian army came up to the city and they besieged the city. I don't know if you know what besiege is. That's where the city is surrounded, surrounded and nothing can get in and nothing can get out. So. Because the walls of the, the uh, city were so high, the Syrian army couldn't get in. So they said, it's all right, we'll wait here. We'll wait outside. So they did. They pitched their tents. And it says there were so many tents. doesn't matter where you looked out from the city, which, how high you were, you just saw loads of the Syrian army all camped around. And nothing could get in and nothing could get out of the city. So let's think, nothing could get in. What happens with all the food and all the people? And it says in the Bible that slowly and slowly there was less and less food because the people were still eating. And food started to cost more and more because there was less of it. And the people started to become really hungry, really hungry. In fact, they became so hungry that some of them actually died. There wasn't enough food. And they were really, really frightened. And the king of Israel went to Elisha and said, what, what do we do? How do we get out of this? And God said to them, by tomorrow, the siege will be finished. You will have food to eat from tomorrow. Oh, that's strange. How is that gonna happen? All the Syrian army is camped outside. There are thousands of them. What on earth is going to happen? So Israel and everyone went to bed that night and they went to sleep wondering how God was going to rescue them. How are they going to get fed tomorrow? And during the night, outside the city walls were four men. Now these were just not ordinary men. These guys were lepers. I don't know if you know what a leper is, but it's a person who is, has a skin disease called leprosy. It's not very nice 
and there's not a lot you can do. Nowadays, we can help people and we can cure it. But in the days of the Old Testament in the Bible, there was not a lot you could do for people who had, uh, who had leprosy. So they were asked, because they didn't like it, they were asked not to be in the city. No one wanted to do with anything to do with them. They were told to go away, live on their own, and not come near them. So they were outside the city. There's no one like them. And they, like everyone else, were very, very hungry, it says the story. They were so hungry that they decided what that night, that specific night, that they were going to sneak into the Assyrian <coughs> army's camp and steal some food because they were so hungry. And that's what they did. They quietly snuck into the uh, Syrian army's camp. And when they got there, they were quite amazed, something amazing. There were, uh, there was tents, there were horses and animals, there was food, loads of food, there was money and, and weapons, but what there wasn't any was any Syrian army. They were all gone, every single one of them. Not a single Syrian soldier was in the camp. They'd all just run away. What everyone didn't realize was during the night, God did an amazing miracle. He sent the sound of a huge army into the Syrian camp and it frightened them so much that they all just ran away. Absolutely ran away. Imagine how amazing God must be to do that, to make the, the Syrian army, who are a strong army, think that they were going to be destroyed by another army. It's so scared and so frightened that they ran away and left everything, all their weapons, their food, their money, their animals. And there was nothing, that, they weren't there. So the four men went, oh, yippee, look at all the food. So they ate as much as they possibly can. And when they were full, they went, oh, hang on, maybe, who else is hungry? Can you remember who else is hungry in the story? It'll be all the Israelites inside the castle, stuck in there. So the four men went to the castle and said, Oi, the Syrian army, it's not there. It's gone, they've run away. But there's loads of food in there, loads of food for all the people to come and eat. You need to come and eat. And that's what happened. All the Israelites rushed outside. They went, this is marvelous. And they rushed outside and they got all the food and everything from the Syrian army. And, and um, Elisha said to the king of Israel, see what God has done. He's rescued you and given you food just as he promised. And it's the same for you and I. You and I <coughs> with sin has stopped us from being friends with God. But he rescued us by sending Jesus, and now we're friends. We're in his family. If we if we if we have Jesus as our special friend, we're in his family. He's rescued us. Do you know what? I think we need to tell other people. Just like the four lepers who found the food knew that they needed to tell the Israelites who were hungry. We who are friends with Jesus. We need to tell other people about that so that they too can be friends with Jesus. They too can be part of his family, which is an amazing, amazing thing. It's a great story of God rescuing his people and caring for them. And he does that for us too. Uh, I hope you realize that. I hope you know God loves you and cares for you. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your holiday. It's been great to be with you. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed listening to Simon tell us the story today. In your pack, which I have dropped off, you're going to find um, <clears throat> an activity sheet, the usual one. So as usual, you can do that now or you can do it a bit later. You get your grown-up to help you fill it out if you're not sure. Also in the pack, you're going to find all the things you need to do, need for making the craft today. <clears throat> Anything you're going to need extra are scissors glue um, and whatever you like to colour in with. If it's felt to pens, crayons, pencil crayons, whatever you like drawing with. 
So in the story today, at the end of it, we heard about the four men who were so hungry they decided to risk going to the enemy's camp to get food. Um, and when they, when they got there, of course, they, as you know, they found there was nobody there. And there were all this food left and there was clothes and money, even abandoned horses. Uh, the enemy had just fled. So we're going to make a picture of this amazing scene. So what you're going to find, first of all, in your pack is a bit of green card. And then we need a tent, because remember the men found all the stuff in the tent. So there's a picture of a tent you can colour in and then get your grown-up to help you cut that out if you're not sure. So you're going to stick that then onto the green card. And then to decorate, um, to, to stick all around the tent, there's some pictures of, um, there are there's some clothes, there's some money in a pot, it's so much it's falling out, there's some food, imagine all that food after being so hungry for so long, the men must have been so grateful. Also there's um, a picture of a horse and some, some chariots, so I'll show you, I'll show you the one I've done myself a little earlier. So this is my picture, as you can see there's a tent stuck on the green card and then I've coloured in, I've got the chariot there, I've got the horse, I've got food, clothes, all the money. So I hope you enjoy making this picture of a really incredible moment when God saved the people in the, in the besieged town. Have fun, lots of love, bye.